Okay, we have here the sum from n equals zero to infinity, one over n squared plus one. The interesting thing here is it's just the plus one. If we could have just one over n squared, that would be pi squared over six. But we do have the plus one, so we can't just do that. And my first thought was like, okay, let's do an index change to get rid of the plus one, but you can't really do an, in I mean, you can do the index change, but it's not gonna help because, you know, if we change this to like n minus one, you multiply it out and now you have like, it becomes a plus three. So it doesn't, it doesn't clean it up the way. It, so it doesn't work the way it would be if we just had like one over n plus one. So I know a few different ways, but I've got something specific in mind. So to get started with it, what I wanna do is first, I just wanna factor this, even though it looks like a problem, we can still factor n squared plus one as n plus i times n minus i. Just because when you distribute that out, you've got n squared minus, the last term is i squared, but i squared is minus one. So this thing's the same as this denominator. So what I'll do is I'm gonna rewrite it, rewriting the denominator this way. But what I want is, then I'm gonna want cancellation. So let's get to that part. I don't feel like doing partial fractions on it. So I kind of just forced the cancellation to happen the way I want. So I'm gonna kind of create each of these, what I'll do is create each of these terms. So I'll create a n plus i, and then I'll subtract off n minus i. And then when you calculate the numerator, the n's will cancel, but you end up with 2i. So then I'm not changing it. Let's just multiply 1 over 2i in front. And then from here, what I'll do is I'm just going to split this up into two fractions to do the cancellation out. So then we can cancel here and here and here and here. So we just have a 1 in the numerator. And something's not right. Oh, yeah, I canceled the wrong one here. So actually, let's just, so I don't have to clean everything up, we'll just make this work. So this should be an n plus i here and minus i here. And then to work on this sum, we'll do this trick that I've done many times before on the channel. I'm going to add in a 1 over n plus 1 and then subtract it off right away. So this way, what we've done, this thing, I'm just adding a 0 into this expression. So to do this and reassemble the whole thing, what's going to happen? I'll do this like two sums. So the first one, I'm going to use the positive right here on the 1 over n plus 1. So we're going to have 1 over n plus 1 and then take the negative. So we'll take this one, 1 over n plus i. And then for the second sum, I'm going to take this 1 over n plus 1, but I'll bring the minus sign out front here. So doing that, we're going to have our sum. We'll have our now inside the sum, this is going to become positive 1 over n plus 1. And I need to squeeze in this term somewhere. So this is going to be 1 over n minus i. The minus sign coming again is we, if you distribute the minus into the minus, this becomes a plus again, which we have right here. So let me get a little bit of space so I can finish this thing. And what you'll notice at this point, we've got two sums that are kind of in the same form here. And the reason for doing this is I want to use the digamma function on it. So what we'll do is we'll use this definition of the digamma function, the series definition down here to the right. But I just want to rearrange it a little bit. We have here the euler mascheroni constant. If I just add that on both sides of the equation, this will cancel. And now we have a way to represent each of these series where the input, this z value is going to be the input on the digamma function. And we're going to find that right here with an i and over here with minus i. Or you could think of this like plus minus i. So using this formula in reverse here, what this is gonna to reduce to is gonna be one over two i. This one becomes just Euler mascheroni constant plus digamma of the z value, which is gonna be i. The second one, let's put parentheses around it. This is gonna be same formula, Euler mascheroni constant plus digamma of the input here, which is gonna be minus i. But then distributing in the minus sign, what's gonna happen is the constants are gonna cancel out and this thing is gonna to reduce to one over two i, di gamma i minus di gamma minus i. So let me make a little space and we'll see if we can simplify this expression here. Okay, now from here to simplify it, I wanna focus on this term, I think. We might be able to do it either way, but I think let's focus on this one. So we have these two formulas over here that we're gonna to use to reduce this. We have this reduction formula. Now, I kinda of wanna do this the other way because I don't wanna, because we have a negative value, what I wanna do is add one to it. 
So what I can do is just kind of rearrange this formula, just subtracting one over Z on both sides. So I can write this like di gamma of Z equals di gamma Z plus one minus one over Z. So using that on di gamma of minus I, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have minus I is the Z. So we plug that in and we get di gamma one minus I plus, no, sorry, minus one over Z. So that's gonna be one over minus I. I guess let's cancel minus and minus is plus, but let's rationalize this or multiply by I. So what's gonna happen is this expression is gonna become di gamma one minus I, then this is gonna produce a minus sign, so we're gonna have minus I right here. So plugging this back in here, actually let's do it over here. So we're gonna have one over two I, di gamma of I, distribute the minus sign and we get minus, di gamma one minus I, distribute minus into this, it's gonna be a plus I. And now doing it like that, what we have here this is set up to use our reflection formula, or almost set up for the reflection formula right here. What I can do to make it clear, like if the z value in this is i, I want it the other way, which would be 1 minus z, or like 1 minus i here. And so I just want to swap these. What I'll do is I'll change it in the formula. So just to reverse the sign and everything, I can write this as di gamma z minus di gamma 1 minus z, and then bring a minus sign over here. So I'll have minus pi cotangent pi z. So apply the formula and let's see what happens. We're gonna get, we still got this. I'm hoping at the end we get a real solution. I, I actually, I may already did the pro <laughs> I already did the problem, so I should know, but I can't remember what the answer is. Um, so this, using the formula with z being i, come to the right side, we're gonna have minus pi cotangent i pi, and then we still got a plus i on the end. Well, I think I will distribute this in at this point. So with this first term, we have minus pi over two i cotangent i pi. And then here though, the i's are gonna cancel and we just get plus one half. And then I think I will multiply in an i right here because what's gonna happen, i times i is negative one. With this minus, this becomes a plus. So I can get rid of all this here. And then from here, I just wanna deal with this cotangent i pi. I don't like having the complex input on it, but luckily I have a couple of formulas for this. Okay, as you might know, cotangent is just cosine over sine. And we have these two formulas to relate complex input on cosine and sine to the hyperbolic cosine and sine functions. So using this, when we've got cotangent i pi, this is gonna be the same thing as cosine i pi over sine i pi. Applying the formula first, we're gonna have just cosh of pi, and then second here, we're gonna have minus cinch of pi over i. So then let's see if we can plug this back in and clean it up. But what I'll do is when I do it, let's flip this i and bring it into the numerator. So we're gonna have, we still have i pi in front over two, and then we're multiplying in, I'll bring the minus over here, and then we have i, like, let's kind of do it like this. So we're gonna have i, cosh pi, cinch pi. But now i times i, i squared is gonna be minus one with a minus, that's just gonna be a one. So all the i stuff and that minus sign goes away. And then here, I think what I wanna do is put this back in the definition of cosh and cinch. Sorry, this is a cinch right here, not a sign. So yeah, that's a cinch, okay. So we're gonna have pi over two. Now like cosh is e to the x, e minus x over two, but cinch is gonna have a two as well, so the twos are gonna cancel. So for hyperbolic cotangent, the way this is gonna look, it's gonna be e pi plus e minus pi over e pi minus e minus pi. And then we still have this one half over here. But then I think I can clean it up a little more if I multiply in here. Um, so that's a mess, but we'll multiply in e to the pi over e to the pi. Then just distributing in, this is gonna become e two pi plus one over e two pi minus one. But what I think I wanna to do to clean this up to get this to match, e two pi plus one, I can force this to be minus one, but then so I don't change it, I can tack on a plus two here. And so we've got this thing and we still have our plus one half. But then what happens is we just created a one here. So we're gonna have 
when you distribute this in, you're gonna have pi over two. The second piece, we're gonna multiply in pi over two times two over this denominator, e two pi minus one plus one half. But twos are gonna cancel here. So for my final solution, let's clean up this first. We have pi over e two pi minus one plus putting together pi over two and one half, I'll write it as pi plus one over two, and that's it. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.